A long time ago in a land far away, there was a man who had a huge farm. And when it came time to plant, he and his servants, they went out and they planted the very best quality wheat you could find. And after they had finished planting all of the rows, they knew that in uh, at the end of the season, they would have a huge harvest and be able to um, take lots of wheat to the market. But un unbeknownst to them, at night, uh, the man had an enemy who came and he marched all throughout that whole field throwing weeds and, and seeds of thistles and thorns everywhere. And he laughed and then he left. Now for a while, no one could tell uh, anything. There were little tiny green shoots coming up and they all looked basically the same. But a couple of months later, the servants were walking and they could tell that there were two different types of leaves coming up. And as they looked closer, they saw that one type was, was the good kind. It was wheat, but another type was the thistle. It was a, a weed and thorns were already showing. And they rushed to the master and they said, oh my goodness, there are thorns among your weeds. And their first thought was, you did this. They were like, you messed up the seeds because we were with you and we were just using the same bag and you must have messed up and bought a bag of weeds with the wheat. But the master shook his head and said, an enemy has done this. It's crazy. Last night we were in our basement in a little inner closet room because there were tornadoes, big storms all over. And this morning as we're looking at the news and we're seeing the destruction in East Brainerd and in different areas, our hearts and our, our prayers go out to all the people who are affected, people who've lost businesses and whose homes have been destroyed, people who have family members in the hospital. And at times like this, people say, why God, why did you do this? Just like those servants looking at the master saying, why did you sow weeds in your own field? That's crazy, that doesn't make sense. And they're right. It doesn't make sense that God would send a tornado that would hurt children and homes. And the answer is the same. The master looked in sadness over his field and he said, an enemy has done this. See, God is good and God is powerful, but that doesn't mean that he is responsible for evil. God does not send storms and, and break houses and hurt people. That's not how he works. Back when Jesus was teaching, uh, the news came in that, that some tower had fallen and, and a small number of people had been destroyed by the tower. And, and the culture at that time, their response was, mm, it was because of their sins. They must not be as good as me because the tower fell on them and not me. Therefore, they must have hidden sins and God was punishing them for their sins. This was justice. They have been punished. And Jesus said, do you think that the tower fell on them, that this tragedy happened on them because they were bad? No. No. So my house is fine. And someone, house, someone else's house isn't. But it's not because I'm better than someone else. It's because we live in a war zone where evil and good are struggling back and forth. And so if something bad happened to you or some family members, know that it breaks God's heart that bad is happening. Know that he is coming soon one day and he's gonna fix all the rights and wrongs. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The promise in Revelation that says Jesus will wipe away every tear from our eye is a promise of the future. God doesn't say if you are baptized or if you join the right church or if you're good enough, you will have no tears. No, he says you will have tears. 
Jesus, he had lots of tears. His followers, they had lots of tears. Jesus never said bad things won't happen and storms won't come. In fact, we have so many stories where Jesus is in the middle of a storm and his disciples are saying, what the heck? I'm with the Messiah. I should be fine. But the storms come even to good people with Jesus living in their hearts. But in those storms, Jesus is there. No matter what happens, when the storm is over, Jesus is there. And if you're praising the Lord because you're fine and safe this morning, amen, praise the Lord. But if you're crying and hurting because the storm hit hard, know that Jesus is with you. Know that an enemy has done this. God is good. When bad things happen and the big dogs bark, we don't have to be afraid. When the storm comes, we need to hang on to Jesus' words because he said, take heart, I have overcome the world. May God bless you.